All right, I just got word from him. Emoji J, are you still in here? He'll be here in less than 10 minutes, so I can go ahead and start the show with George first. But I want to make sure George, uh, Jay is in here. I just messaged Jay. All right, if we can get Jay to come in and start the intro to the show. We're ready. We're ready for the show. Vibe's going to come in 10 minutes. You're in? Okay. All right. All righty. Thank you so much for that intro, Emoji J. I appreciate that so much. Guys, you are tuning in to the Road to Life show with Tim the Trucker and myself as your host tonight. It is a late night here. Uh, but today we have two amazing guests. We have Trucker George. We also have Vibrance, two amazing people, two good friends of mine on the app. So please, as I'm going through the show, I got both of them in the box. Please make sure you're hitting the fave on them. Show them some love. Uh, we're going to start tonight. Uh, well, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about what the show's about, right? The show is, is basically just to show you that no matter where you come from in life, no matter where you go in life, we are all relatable. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're halfway across the world or you're five miles away from your best friend. You know, we're all relatable to each other in one way or another. Uh, that's pretty much what the show's about. But let's go ahead and get Trucker George in the box and start with him. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me. What's up? Yeah, so I just want to let you know before we start, this is a featured show, so we cannot have any cussing, smoking, or drinking in the box uh, that that goes for the comments as well um so i would appreciate that respect uh not only for me but for my guests as well uh but george can you tell us a little bit about yourself yeah no problem um, my name is george i'm 35 i'm a truck driver as well i own a small fleet of trucks um i have my own company um Let's see. I'm a seven-year combat vet. I spent four tours while I was in the Marine Corps. 
um yeah i'm just on here just have a good time this is like my little way of socializing since i'm behind the wheel 10 11 hours a day six days a week definitely definitely it's it's one of the best ways for us truck drivers to have a social life um outside of work because you know outside of the truck we really don't have lives um no. but can you tell us a little bit about how long you've been streaming what you came uh, on yeah there? i've been streaming since june 22nd of this past summer so what what is that about almost nine months already um i met some great people met some bad apples but hey you can't really sometimes when you have that pat patches of apples and all you gotta take the bad ones out and leave the good ones in so that's how i see it sometimes all right all right so that's yeah that's that's straight facts um so can you tell us a little bit about where you grew up yeah no problem so i'm originally a boston kid i'm from the east side of boston um not the greatest areas in the city either um i Let's see. I was there until I was eight. Moved out of Boston. My parents got a horrible divorce. My mom pretty much kidnapped us. Moved down to Florida for about two years. Um, stayed there for about a year. I never really understood having Christmas without snow before until I moved down to Florida. It was kind of weird being 85 degrees and I'm like rollerblading down the street and don't have to worry about shoveling anything. So after that, I moved up to New Hampshire from 99 to 2001 uh, a week about a week after during 9-11 i lost two of my friends moved down to texas on um, two weeks after 9-11 moved to el paso texas um from 2001 to 2005 went to high school down there and joined the marine corps from 05 to 12. Nice, nice. So you've moved around a lot. Yeah. It seems like, that. you know, that's, and it seems like you did a lot of this moving in your young childhood life, you know, growing up. Uh, and I know that's got to be hard moving around so much. Um, so tell us a little bit about the story behind, you know, because there's a story behind every decision to move, right? Uh, so right. can you tell us, you know, what was it that that kind of made not so much yourself because I know you said you were young at the time, but mm -hmm. you know, do you know some of the reasons on why your, your mother thought it was good for you to move? Yeah. Um, that's actually a good question. Um, my mom made my mom, my mom took us out of the, out of the state Massachusetts illegally. If you according to um, child custody rights and all that, um, because my dad was abusive back then. My dad was an addict. So my mom didn't, trust him around us or the family so my mom moved us down to florida my grandma was living in new hampshire um one day um my mom got caught up in a bad situation down in florida with with one guy um we moved to new hampshire um lived there for a little bit my mom my grandmother met this is the thing like old people meeting people online is kind of weird. I don't know if you guys all remember AOL, right? Hash, like shout out to <laughs> AOL, you know, dial up. Um, my grandma met a guy off, off AOL chat rooms. She moved to El Paso, Texas in 1999. Um, mind you, the only thing Spanish I really knew was Zorro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, so when we moved out, so we moved, so we followed her in 2001. And like my first day, my first day of high school, I was already like, you know what? I had a, I had a little bad situation. Um, was, I had some run-ins with some bad, bad people in high, in my high school, in my freshman year, of my prep school. Cause I was actually at a prep school for hockey where you needed a scholarship to play for that team. Just like in Mighty Ducks D3, mm -hmm. like you need like a scholarship to go to that school. Um, had some run-ins with pills because, you know, being an athlete kind of hurts. So moved down to Texas and I was like, you know what? Fresh start for everybody, right? Walked in campus. I'm hearing, you know, a foreign language and I'm like, this isn't going to go well for me. So yeah. I sat which, down which in my Which is going to lead into, be before you get to saying too much, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep us on track here a little bit and 
kind of kind of ask the question that that's you're probably going to already answer um yeah. but i, I want to know you know as like you said you moved around a lot as as a child growing up you know what were some of the hardest things you struggled with you know moving around so much and and going to all these places where you didn't really have a choice of going to, right you know you would just kind of drug along um the hardest thing was really to fit in like locking in like what crowd am i gonna belong with because i grew up being a hockey player so when i found out i knew dallas and houston and san antonio had high like high school prep hockey i really thought el paso did too mm -hmm. and i was like okay and when my principal laughed at me like we don't have hockey here in el paso so i went to my secondary sport football that was actually really good and i actually had a scholarship but i had to lock in like who am I going to fit in with? And that was the hardest part. So I want to, even though I was part of the football team, I was still maybe until my second year, my second year, like not really having a group of friends because I was feeling all the crowds out. It wasn't the language barrier really, but it was just, who's my people? Right. And it's always hard to find your people, especially when you're moving to a new state. You don't really know anybody. You know, you don't know who you can trust, uh, you know, so it, it's definitely hard doing so. Um, but at this time, I want to let the people who are just tuning in, let them know what they're walking into. This is the Road to Life show with Tim the Trucker and myself as your host. We do this every Tuesday morning, 12 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, it, it's going to be a featured show on the app. Uh, today we have Trucker George as one of our guests. We also have Vibrant, who's going to be coming in the box very soon. Uh, so please stick around for him. Uh, right now we're talking to Trucker George. You know, he just told us a little bit about where he was born and raised. The amount of moves this man has, has done and the things he's been through in life is incredible. Um, you know, and you're, you're still young, George. So, you know, your whole life ahead of you, man. Um, so I want to know, you know, what was what was one of the most difficult parts of leaving your hometown that that you dealt with family did you leave family yeah family um my cousin he's my cousin is 366 days older than me a year and a day older than me so we always had that feud against each other and to this day we still do like we always played it. We always played every sport against each other, never with each other. Um, family. Dunkin' Donuts coffee is so much different on the East Coast. Let me tell you, <laughs> like when you can walk around every corner in the city of Boston and get a hot Dunkies and all that, like it's the best time of your life. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, you know, so you, you said you've been through a lot. You're you're a veteran as well. Um, you know, you've been through combat. Um, and and I want to know, you know, what what has the experience? You know, as as time passed on, as you've gotten older, what are some of the experiences? What have they been like compared to maybe something you've expected? You know, a lot of back pain. Um, I was already expecting that. Um, I'm a two-time Purple Heart um, Awards recipient from Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, I knew when 9-11 happened, I knew what my call was, and that was literally join. Mm -hmm. I, knew, I knew that was going to be it. Um, I pretty much already told my mom, like, when I, I – to this day, I still remember the time my mom said goodbye to me at the airport when I was on my way to boot camp to San Diego. Um, I told my mom straight out, like, I know what I'm doing. She didn't like it because I was 17. My mom had to sign the waiver. My dad did, too. During the time, my dad was kind of cordial with me. Um, by the time I was 18... I went on my first deployment to Iraq, and the third month in, I got hit by an IED. Um, I still have all my limbs, but excuse me so much, sorry about that. Um, I just, 
it really just rattled my brain. Um, I do suffer from CTE. Um, that's what football players get from concussions and all that. Mm -hmm. um, it everything has taught me like no matter what your body goes through in life, just smile. Like That's seriously, like you've gone like no matter what you've gone through, we've all gone through breakups, we all lost jobs, we all gained jobs, we all lost this, we all lost that. Smile. That's the only thing we have left. It's just a smile. Mm -hmm. That and... is that is very true. Um, you know, and I wanna you know, you you're saying, you know, all the pains and, and loss and you know, you you've left family behind in Boston and stuff. And uh, to kind of stay away from that, I I wanna know because you said you're living in El Paso now. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanna know what what made you in the long run decide to move to El Paso, Texas of all places. You know, out of all the places you could be at in America, what what kind of like made you want to go to El Paso? Well, yet again, um, it was my mom's decision because her mother was down there, my grandmother. Okay. Um, my grandma made a BS lie saying that she's very ill and she doesn't know how long she's going to live. Remind you all, she lives with me still. All right. And this is from 2001, 22 years ago. And she's still living. All right. Um, she just wanted her, she'll tell you straight if I could get her on here. She even said it. She wanted her favorite grandchild living with her. Mm -hmm. Like, because I have, I'm the closest thing my grandmother has to her late husband. So she felt really close with me more than anyone because of that. That's, so, that's very sweet. Yep. Yeah. So I I want to know this too. How how long have you been living in El Paso now? Well, so when I well that's a good one. So when I got out, when I got out of the Marines in 2012, 2012 to 2014, I was working for the State Department. Um, I was security for diplomatic security. Um, so I would travel around in private jets and suits. Trust me, I didn't look like this back then. Um. I actually did look good in suits back then, but I've been living in El Paso consistently from 2008, 2017 to now. So six years. Okay. That's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, so especially converting from the military, um, what what have been some of the struggles, you know, when you got out of the military, when, when you had that part of your life over with and you transitioned into everyday normal life, as we like to call it, into El Paso, uh, what is what have, what was some of your biggest struggles making that move? How hard was it for you to find your people and, and create a, a stable life in El Paso? Hmm. So I want... It wasn't more of that. It was more my what I have to do so I don't fall into my biggest fear. And my biggest fear is being a homeless veteran. Hmm. That's one thing I promised myself I'd never do, is be a homeless vet. Um, there are some times I have struggled, but I've always bounced back. And I smiled. Um, it sometimes you learn like everyone in here can vouch on this you could be the most popular person in, in high school you can have a thousand friends but how many of those people do you talk to to this day i still talk to one 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 person from high school and he he's literally my best friend like he always guided me smack he would always smack me up if i had to and all that like yo you need to refocus. And I did. And here I am today. Yeah, that yeah, that's I completely agree because you know I may not have been out of school as long as you have now, but <laughs> you know, um I, I have one friend that I talk to. Um and, and the thing is with it is 
we don't even talk every day, but we're so close that we could go two years without talking, but that one phone call in that two years, you know, we act like we've never stopped talking to each other. You know, right. we start right where we left off. And, and it's it's hard to find people like that. And those are the people you need to hold the closest to you. Um, but I want to know, I, I want to add this into there too, because, you know, just in case anybody's deciding or, or planning on moving, you know, soon or anything like that, and El Paso might have been a choice for them. What what best advice would you give them if they were going to move to El Paso? Don't go to the east side. The northeast is the hood. Go to the west side, close to the mountain. Better it is. Closer to the mountain, the better. That's you get a good community and a view, right? Yeah, I open my back. I open my apartment door, and there it is. The mountains right there. Like, it's amazing. Nice, nice, nice. Well, guys, if you're just tuning in, this is the Road to Life show with Tim the Trucker. Um, we do this show every Tuesday, 12 a.m. Uh, we're working on it getting featured. Today we have Trucker George in the box as a guest. We also have Vibe Rants, who I also believe is a military veteran. So look at that, two military veterans in my show tonight. I'm, we all, I'm sure, thank you for your service. Um, you know, I, I know the dedication and the things that you guys give up while serving, uh, as I have members of my family who have served as well. Um, but George, I do appreciate you for, for being on here. I'm going to go ahead and get you out of the box for yeah, a few no minutes. Problem, if you would just please stick around because at the end, I would like to bring both you and Vibrance back into the box kind of let you guys talk and, and get to know each other a little bit as well. And I'll give you both another chance to kind of tell us a little bit more about yourselves. All right. No problem. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right. Let's see if we can get Vibrance. Also guys, while I, while I'm going to uh, put Vibrance in here again, this is the road to life show with Tim, the trucker and myself as your host. I just want to let you guys know, I do see all the comments. I do see all the gifts. I do appreciate them. But again, this is a featured show and it would just take way too much time to acknowledge everybody. Um, but I do see them. I do appreciate them. Let's go. And Vibrant's already in. Hey, what's up, Tim, buddy? How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good, man. How are you? That's that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I'm I'm great. I'm great. We're we're awake and we're alive, man. What could be better? You know? Um, so I know a little bit about you. Not a whole yeah, lot, but a little, little bit. bit. You know, so can you go uh, go ahead and tell everybody else a little bit about yourself? You know, when Absolutely. You're doing, so my name inspired. is Vive. Um I'm a featured show host Wednesdays for Who Wants to Be a Diamond Air. Uh kind of out of element at the moment. Usually I'm a PC streamer. Um, and I am also a veteran. I was in from 2007 to 2014 in the army. I've uh, been to Afghanistan once, did 12 months there. Uh, I was also a truck driver at one point. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a common thing. But, you know, divorced. Uh, I stream a lot religiously. But that's pretty much who I am. I've been all over the place. I've lived in a couple of different states. So okay, okay. Well, well, let's start off with, you know, where were you born and raised, Ryan? Uh, so I was born in Everett, Washington, and I was raised in a town called Bellingham. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not my mom trying to flirt with you, vibe. <laughs> no, I know she was asking a question. Um, yeah. So. Wow, Washington, man. I, I know the scenery over there. I've been to Washington a, a few times, and it's actually one of the most beautiful states that I think I've ever seen, and I've traveled all over America. Um, you know, I think the, the views out there are absolutely breathtaking. Uh, but, you know, like the same, the same questions I asked 
George, you know, there's a story behind everybody moving. Um, so mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what made you decide to move? Was it your parents? Was it something you decided? <laughs> so I was dating this chick who I worked with. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, and uh, I ended up really liking her. And then she came to fell on hard times. And me, I was like 17, 18. I was like, no, nah, don't worry. I got this. I got like a four bedroom townhouse is like my first place and all this other stuff. And I was like, yo, you know, you, you and the kids can come stay here. Uh, things are good for a while. And then like money started getting hard. Uh, things were uh, definitely, definitely starting to struggle. So I started looking into the options of like, going uh reserves one week in a month two weeks a year helps with the kids help with everything um she asked me if she can go take care of some business that i felt was pretty uh out of line we'll just say and uh when the two of us split up long story short I moved out that night and called my recruiter. Is like, yo, buddy, sign me up full time. <laughs> and then, wow, like, so not even like a month. That, man. Yeah, not even a month later, man. I was sitting at OSAT in Fort Sill doing doing field artillery. Uh, and then uh, we were preparing radar missions to go to Afghanistan and stuff like that. So you you served. You said from 2007 to 2014, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah. So that's like, that's seven, seven years, right? Yeah. So what was that like, man? That that had to put you through a journey within itself, you know? Uh, so starting in basic training, coming straight out of high school, let me tell you, like, it's a different world. And then when you look at it, when you look at it later on in your life, you're like, wow, I was so dumb. Um, You know, it, it's like, wow, I couldn't just like, figure it out and just follow the rule wicked easy. No, I had to make it com complicated, you know? Hey, look, she's a grown woman. She can do whatever she wants. I had to change that. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but, but eventually, uh, so I got my act together pretty quick, actually. Um, uh, I got my stripes within three years. So I became a non-commissioned officer with, within three years. Um, and I was the, uh, gunner on an M triple seven howitzer, uh, artillery system. And, uh, then after that, when we came back from Afghanistan, I took care of the training room. So yeah, 155 millimeters of pure unadulterated hatred and nicotine packed into a lovely container. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, uh, I, I want to know, man, because you said you were 17 18 when you when you moved from washington mm -hmm. what what was that like being so young and and moving away from the place you were born and raised and and kind of grew up um so i have this quirk about me where i have disassociation basically um i'm not as mentally attached to a lot of things as normal people would be Right. Um, there are a lot of things and people who I do get attached to. I just can't help that I'm attached to this. Um, as far as like leaving my family and all that behind, you know, blood may be thicker than water, but it's also easier to drown in. I don't care how, how, you know, close family they are. Toxic is toxic. So. Yep. <laughs> Zing. That's what she said. Um, you know, it, it is. It, it's it's definitely definitely different um i do miss talking to my mom i miss seeing my mom i don't really see my family uh i go i can go years without seeing people i don't it's not a big deal for me yeah people... and and i feel that as well you know <laughs> me being a trucker i mean my mom's in here she can contest it's been months since i've seen my mother i mean it's probably been i think since christmas Honest. That's okay. She last... can come visit me and Lady K. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's mom, been she, a while. He so. said it's been a few months, so he, his mom can come visit us. <laughs> I'm sure she would love that. She would love that. 
Um, <laughs> so, so you know, we, we talked about where you grew up from. You've talked about your service a little bit, which is always, you know, nice. And I, I want to thank you again, you know, for your service. Um, like I had said earlier, you know, I have uh, a lot of family that have actually served in the military, um, you know, so much respect to you guys for that. I know it's hard. Um, you know, you got to have bigger groins than I do for that, you know. Um, <laughs> but, man, so besides that, you know, moving around, what is what is some of the biggest challenges with all the moving and, and the uh, non-consistency of your life? What what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced? So I that? actually just moved back to Washington two years ago. I lived out in New York for 12. Um, out in New York, I noticed that the East Coast and the West Coast are two totally different animals. Oh, yeah, drum. Mm -hmm. Just where careers go to die. Um, but out in out in New York, um, life out there is a lot different. Uh, the the weather is a lot different. The the everything is. Um, if you've you said you spent time out in Washington, New York has a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of big difference. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the biggest ones is the fact of how they treat their their military and 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 everything around the local area. Uh, eventually it got to a point um where i said i couldn't do new york anymore after i got out and uh i just decided to say you know what i sold everything i owned i got rid of everything i loaded what we could into a tow behind trailer on our jeep and drove cross country you know with like a thousand bucks just left yeah and done you know now right, well, i want to go ahead and plug the show in a little bit guys if you're just tuning in this is the road to life show with tim the trucker myself as your host we do this every tuesday morning at 12 a.m we bring two amazing guests in today we actually have two veterans and what are the odds of that i didn't even plan on that um but we have two veterans we have vibrance we also had trucker george in here please hit both of these amazing streamers uh with that favorite they both do go live daily uh, you know, Vibe, you mentioned you also have a, a featured show, which I will let you, I would love to let you talk more about that later on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'll let you plug in your show and, and let everybody get to know more about you. Um, right. But guys, this this is a featured show, so please, there will be no, no cussing a lot in the comments, nor for me or my guest. Uh, that's the thing. I don't, we, we can only see us, so the smoking and drinking, we know better. You know, I know you know better vibe. Um, but yeah, guys, just please stay respectful. Um, I do see the comments, I do see the gifts, I appreciate them all. No, I cannot acknowledge them all at once, but they are appreciated. Um but man, you've you've had a life, vibe. You've had a life. Oh man, I've I've done all sorts of things. I'm a jack of all trades and master of a few. Master of a few. I was I was waiting for you to say master of none, but no, I'm I mean, a master at least you got a few. Yeah, I went to a national tractor trailer school in, in Liverpool, New York. I became a nationally accredited uh, truck driver with a crap ton of extra certificates and stuff. Um, I, my, me and my family, uh, my dad at least, we still hang out every once in a while. And we, we've always been into racing. Um, particularly uh stage rally racing which is <laughs> intense uh these yes. dudes are throw we're we're flying through the uh through the forest at about 70 to 120 miles an hour going through the trees and stuff where you most very dangerous too yeah. 10 miles an hour come on <laughs> this is slow down rebecca mm -hmm. so i, I want to know a little bit i want to know a little bit more because we've touched on your washington life i want to know a little bit more you said you moved to new york you know what were what were some of the struggles when you moved to New York that you said? Because you said it was a little bit different the way they treated, you know. Yeah, the way they treated the military and, and everything. Yes. Yeah, so um, what was that? What was it like over there? Um, well, they, they, the 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 locals definitely price gouge, and it's it's typical around most military bases. It happens over here around uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord as well. Um, but most landlords who are private owners, uh, they they scalp military pretty hard 
Um, they purposely set their prices high to, to collect the entire BAH, and that leaves the soldier and their family struggling a little bit. Um, and and they're you know it, it's you go into a place and you want to eat or something like that, and just people are rude to you a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman is not a man. <laughs> just put it that way so so let me ask you this you know i'm i'm not gonna so much ask because well let me ask this question in advance uh how long were you did you live in new york how long did that last uh so i lived in upstate new york for 12 years okay so so quite a bit um yeah and then- yeah so once you know you can only deal with negative 60 degrees so many times until you're like you know what I'm tired of living where the air hurts my face. No, don't. Oh, okay. Come on. Sorry. For missiles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it the the negative sixty degrees. No, thank you. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was born and raised in Ohio, right on the lake, so we got the cold weather, all the snow plus the lake effect so i know all about it man right um, so if you look up um one of the snowiest places uh in the country you'll see um you'll, you'll see it up there it's like tug hill watertown new york area it's one of the well uh one of the years that we lived there we had over 120 inches of snow for the year this is, that's that's crazy yeah I, I yes, that's crazy, and I don't want to get too much off subject because I can talk yeah. about that. I want to know a little bit, you know, because you said you moved around family and you touched in a little bit about it. Um, but what was the most difficult thing you would say the 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 struggles you've had being separated from your family, moving so far away, and then even being in the service. Uh, I would say that I personally feel like there's a lack of a, a support system that I had over the years, for sure. Granted, I had friends and stuff. I had, you know, but to feel like your family doesn't really give two rips, that's eh, a little bit of a different type of pain. Yeah. But, yeah I, you know, I, I'm not a, I don't really sit and dwell on it kind of thing. I'm mad at stuff in the moment. And then once that moment's gone, it's like it never even happened. It's like, were you just mad about that like 10 minutes ago? Well, I'm kind of broken like that. So yeah, I just kind of moved on. Completely. I'm I'm kind of the same way too. I'd be super mad at something for about five, 10 minutes, and then I just move on with it. It is what it is, you know? Right. Um, yeah, man. So so let me ask you this, because you said you're living back now, and, and this is going to be my last question for you. Um, and then I'm going to also bring Trucker George in, introduce, I don't know if you guys know each other, but I'll let you guys introduce each other um and he then... popped on to tell me that i was missing the show and i was like oh no <laughs> i'm in the shower crap yeah yeah i'm happy <laughs> you didn't box up while you were in the shower you know as, as much as yeah man really thanks for reaching out on like instagram it. like a decent human being yes yes for sure for sure um but you know what it's gonna be the same question i asked uh trucker george you know if, if say i came to you and i was like you know what vibe i'm i'm looking to plan and i'm moving to washington you know what would be some of the advice that you would give me if i was planning on moving there um stay as far away from seattle and portland as possible and uh you know if you think that i uh, uh eight, not 81 is that 95 where the george washington is uh if you think that's bad go and go over the over the jw or gw <laughs> uh yeah avoid i5 seattle traffic at all costs there's no way around no way none you have to wait and it sucks is it kind of like going into la on the five yeah yeah it sucks yeah <laughs> George says it's worse. Worse? Oh wow. Oh, oh vibe. 
I appreciate you coming in here, man. I'm going to go ahead and bring George in the box. But before I do so, George, if you would request that box, I want to go ahead and give a little another plug to the show. Uh, this is the Road to Life show with Tim the Trucker and myself as your host every Tuesday at 12 a.m. This is where it gets confusing for some people because it is that 12 a.m. slot. You know, a lot of people think it's midnight at 12 a.m. Technically, you could say it is just, you know, the morning. Um, you know, Bob Rance here might have gotten a little bit confused, but it's all right. He's That's here. because it's 9 o'clock my time. Hey man, it's tomorrow yes. for y'all. It's not yep. not even midnight here. Yep, it is. It is a bit confusing. Um, twelve a.m. Tuesday morning Eastern time, nine a nine p.m. for people Pacific. like Vibe, you know. Uh, but guys, we do this every week. We bring two amazing guests in. We kind of talk about their life story uh, just a little bit. We touch base on on quite a few things. Um, today we had two servicemen in here, uh, which was quite interesting to to hear some of the struggles. And I didn't know New York was like that, man. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna stop, you know, ranting on and go ahead and bring Trucker George into the box. As in, see, man, my name's Rance. <laughs> that back to me. Come here, Tank. Give Uh-oh. it to me. George, you're in the box. <laughs> He's talking to his dog too. My dog ate my dog ate my burrito. Oh, <laughs> that's a struggle within itself, man. He ate my California yeah. burrito behind my back. Yeah, well, I mean, look, at least he didn't eat the uni meat gobbler burrito. Oh man, tank. I'm gonna. Tank. Come so here. while we're you might have to you this. might have to reverse engineer that burrito from the inside, sir. Oh, God. Trucker George, give me a thumbs up when you're all good. I'm gonna go ahead and let Vibrance tell us a little bit more about him, and you know when can we find you streaming? Tell us. What so I stream is. just. I stream about seven days a week, just about. Sometimes I'll stream less. Sometimes I'll stream more, if there is such a thing. If I have the opportunity, I'll do it. Um, Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm the host of Who Wants to Be a Diamond Air, where you answer a 15-question trivia game, or the guest answers a 15-question uh, trivia game in order to win a special effect of a car or vehicle, I guess I should say, mode of transportation to go through my fake Vibrance restaurant drive through scene that randomly populates. It's quite funny. You're, you're, you're going to love it, Trucker George. Um, you know, we have, we have constant things going on. Uh, we have two different, uh, hoodie giveaways going on right now, all, all sorts of fun stuff. So, uh, if you guys want to check those out, please stop by the stream, hit me with a favorite and, uh, you know, we'll get on up so we can get down. Yeah, definitely guys Ooh. hit Vibrance with that favorite. He, like he said, he does have a featured show. It is a great show. Um, I have been there and watched it a few times. Myself. The Wonka scene is a nightmare. And there is, oh, oh, correct? Uh, yep. There's a space. Monster truck. <laughs> Robo monster truck. Well, you know, the, the question, the question, you know, for me is, you know, is there a clearance? Can oh, I yeah, a man. It's, it's a got a 17 foot. My big old semi truck. Clearance. So you, you, right, we're good. you're, oh, you're I'm all good. set. We can, we I'm can throw good. any. Yeah, man. We only need 13.6. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. I know, but we got 17 just in case we got an overheight load. All right. You guys, never know guys. if somebody needs to come through driving a Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, man. nice. Well, Vibe, I appreciate you stopping by, man. Uh, much love to you. Uh, hey, no problem, man. Again, I'm glad guys, I can be here. Yes, I appreciate it so much. Guys, make sure you hit a favorite on both of these two amazing men. Um, I consider them both friends on the app, uh, uh, and, and even outside of the app, you know, vibe. I know we just, you know, are still getting to know each other, but mm-hmm. you know, I I feel like we're gonna be great friends, man. Um, oh yeah, I'm we got this. Gonna be coming to your streams more often. Yeah, I got He's you. Definitely look, I, I tell everybody, look, I I I don't try to sound like a bad person. 
I stream so much that I'm barely in other people's streams, but I'm there for like five minutes. I gift and dip. I'm sorry. It's just this is the method for my madness. It's nothing personal. That's just, there's hey, no no hard feelings over here. You know, I kind of do the <laughs> same thing as well. Um, and you know, I I find a lot of a lot of top streamers, a lot of, of people, because there's just so many people you got to go and and show support to. You know. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm not going to get into that whole subject. Yeah. Get a notepad and a pencil. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, but again, we do appreciate you. I do appreciate you, you for your service as well. Um, you're free to go stay, whatever you, you feel. Necessary. All right. Well, you know, I'm just Tim's mom. Good night. <laughs> she already <laughs> left. <laughs> uh, Please make sure you go fave him. So, George, man. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about you. When can we find you streaming? Some of the content you bring to the app. Oh, man. Um, if you can't catch me streaming on here, you guys can, you know, can catch me on Tim the Trucker's um, app because I'm usually in his box yelling at everyone in the world with him um, where we just let our air horns do the talking for us. Um <laughs> Let's see. You, I stream seven days a seven days a week, pretty much all all day. Um, earlier today, earlier this evening was pretty interesting. I hit a coyote, um, destroyed the bumper. Uh, Tim can vouch on that. It looks like I took a piece out of it, like I bit into it. Um, yeah, it's all right though. Um, it didn't do my much front damage. axle. No, my front axle did go up in the air though. Like I did feel that. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Popped a little um, willy and came back down. Yeah, I was like, my truck yeah. ain't supposed to do this. I don't know. Like, the content I bring is just let's talk. Let's talk. Let's just chop it up. You know what I mean? Like, there's no mm -hmm. really like set stone. Like, hey, how's your day? You know what I mean? Like, you got some vent. Sometimes I bring some venting in. Sometimes I always ask like a a no a non popular question, but it gets everyone wild like round up. That's about it. Um, I don't have any feature shows. Um, Do you have any auctions coming up? Better Rose? Uh, like I got so, I got a no. Um, Andrew Moody. Um, he's an admin on here. I don't know why he's not in here right now. We actually have a show on the March third. I believe. Yeah, March 13th. I have a show on him. Um, it's named that gibberish. So he's going to show like random like letters as a word and I got to like mm -hmm. figure it out. Um, yeah, so he of, does that featured show. It, it is called Guess the Gibberish, just so you guys know. Um, but yeah, he's that, also, also, and then guys, if you are interested in being on the show, you can always hit up Moody Andrew, Emoji J, or K Kizzle, or even myself. Um, and we can always get you booked on the show. Uh, but George, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate your service. you, too, brother. Um, you know, uh, much love welcome. to you, man. Uh, but you're free to go, stay, whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make you smaller, though. Uh, just to okay, kind of please do. I don't. I don't see my bring me back on here. Hey, yes. Yeah, so, guys, you just tuning in you're just catching the end of the week we bring two amazing guests into the box we kind of talk about their life experiences you know where they started out from in life and where they're at now kind of the struggles they've had in between that um it's it's something i'm very passionate about learning you know you get to learn so much about other streamers um you know kind of the hardships and struggles they went through and you also get to realize how much life is relatable um you know even even if you didn't move you know and you're still stuck in that same spot that you were born and raised in you know some of us are, are still related you know um but yeah I, that's about it if you're interested in being on the show like i said emoji j moody andrew k kiss or even myself and pretty much anybody in red can can get you. I do want to thank you all for showing up. 
I want to go ahead and give a shout out to my top gifters. So I'm going to go ahead and do the top five. So in the fifth place, we have Jeremy coming in at, at number four. We have Tater Teats. And then the top three, we have Trucker George coming in at number three. Queen Hazel in at number two. And one of my favorite top badges on the app. We have Boss Bro coming in at number one. I do appreciate you guys so much for those gifts. I appreciate you for showing up. George, not a problem. And guys, this is the end of the show. I hope you all have a blessed night. Thank you so much.